All right, welcome back. Another useful thing that we can do with loops is running totals. So I'm going to add my main method here again. Now inside of the main method, we're going to declare just for our example, we're going to have a days variable, we're going to have a sales variable, and we will have a total sales. Now for the total sales, we will initialize this value to zero. So basically every time we get a new sales figure, we can just add that sales to total sales. So in this case, we're just going to ask a question here to the user for how many days do you have sales figures? So the user is going to tell us also again how many times we should execute this loop. And then we'll keep a running total of the number of sales that we get. So firstly, we need to get the number of days now. We asked the question for how many days do we have sales figures. Now because days is an integer, we need to use int.parse with the stdin.readlinesync. So remember that it adds your import at the top. Okay, so we're going to get the number of days from the user. We convert that number of days to an integer and we save it. And now we can run a for loop again because we know exactly how many times this loop should execute. It should execute the number of days entered. So in this case, we're going to start with, let's call it count this time. Start with zero. While the count is less than the number of days. And we're going to say count plus plus. Okay, let's say we want to print out to the user. Enter the sales for day. And now we want to indicate day one, day two, day three, day four. So if we use the count variable there, you will see that the very first time it runs, it's going to print out enter the sales for day zero. And that doesn't make sense. So let's start the count at one. And then we need to add the equal sign there to run at the same amount of times. Or you could have said, leave it as zero and leave out the equal sign, but have this one count plus one in brackets. So it's up to you how you want to do it. So we're going to print out, enter the sales for day one, then the next time day two, day three, day four. Okay, so now we're going to say sales equals, and now we need to get that sales from the user. So it's basically what we did here, except that it's a double that we need to pass, or we need to pass that string to a double. And it's going to be stdin dot read line sync again so that there we get the sales amount for that specific day and then we need to calculate now the total sales so the total sales is our running total and the running total will start at a zero and we will keep on adding to that total in order to get a specific value at the end so i'm going to say total sales will be total sales which is the previous value of total sales in the first time the loop runs it will be zero plus the sales value that we just got from the user so there's a shorter way to do this instead of saying total sales equals total sales plus sales we can just go and say plus equals sales and that will do exactly the same thing basically just saying take whatever is in total sales and add sales to it right and right at the end we can have a nice print statement that says something like the total sales for and now we can add the number of days and let's say days there are add the rand value there or the dollar or whatever you want to use there and inside there we just want to do a quick conversion there so that we make sure that we actually print out something useful so we're going to say total sales dot and you remember this remember this two string as fixed and that will give us the fractional value and round it off to two decimal values so we're printing out the total sales for how many days let's say the user types uh, 10 days there then it will say the total sales for 10 days are and we're going to go to the total sales which is our running total and we're going to convert that or round it off to two decimal places. Okay, so what did we do here? We asked for how many days do you want sales figures? 
we get that number of days. And for exact that same exact amount of times, we will execute this loop. And every time it runs, we're going to ask enter the sales for day one. So if he entered three there, the first time the loop runs, it's going to say enter the sales for day one. Then the count will be incremented. Enter the sales for day two. Enter the sales for day three. Okay, and then we get the sales and we add it to our running total. And at the end, we can just print it out. So let's save it and let's run this one quickly. So we're going to say dot running totals dot dot. All right, so you can see there for how many days do you have sales figures? Let's say three. Enter the sales for day one. Let's say that the sales for days one, day one is 30. Then we've got a 20. And then we've got a 50, so that should be 100. The total sales for three days are 100. So that is how you can do a running total. Let's look at the last one. And this is sentinel value, so we'll have a main method again there. So what is a sentinel value? That's actually where we ask the user to stop a loop. So we will keep on looping something until the user tell us to actually stop the loop from running. So let's just quickly have a look at an example. So I'm going to declare two values or two variables, int value and int double value. Now we can print out and ask the following question. Please enter a value to double or a zero to stop. So you can see this is now the sentinel value. We're asking the user to enter a value to double. But if he clicks on zero or if he types zero, then our loop should stop. And that's what we call a sentinel value. Now let's get this value quickly from the user. So we've declared it at the top. So we're going to use stdin again, but we need to convert it to an integer. So it's going to be int dot pass stdin dot. Let's just go back. Choose stdin there dot read line sync make sure you have your import at the top so we're going to say get whatever the user typed in the console convert it to an integer and that will be our value now i'm going to use a while loop for this one and we're going to say value not equal to zero so our stop value or our sentinel value is now the zero because we're asking the user, please enter a value to double or a zero to stop. So in the while loop, I'm going to keep on doing something while the value is not a zero because as soon as it's a zero, we want to exit the loop and stop the loop from running. So inside of the loop, we're going to get or we're going to double the value. So we get the value from the user and now we want to double it. So double value equals the value multiplied by 2 and now we can print out value doubled is and let's show the value doubled which is double value so the value doubled whatever the user typed the value doubled is then that double value which is the value multiplied by 2 now this is all nice let's look at the loop again we have got step number one where we declare the variable loop control variable we initialize the loop control variable we tested the loop control variable but in this case we have not changed it yet so that's a very important step in order to make sure that this loop is not an infinite loop so what do we need to do then so basically i'm going to do these two lines again i'm going to ask it inside of the loop please enter a value to double or zero to stop and then he enters the value again. And because that value now changes, we can test again. If it's not zero, not equal to zero, we'll do this whole process again. But if it is zero, then we're going to stop the loop from executing. So this is a sentinel value. Let's quickly check it out. So that one is dart sentinel values dot dot. Enter value to double, let's say 20. And it's 40. 50 will be 100. 40 will be 80 and so forth. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, doubled. And uh, so I can carry on forever until I enter a zero and that will stop my loop. So that is a sentinel value where you ask the user to give you a value in order to stop a loop from running.
That's then it for this video and some useful loop calculations. See you in the next one.